Welcome. Sorry. I'd shut up. Welcome to Barking Jack. I'm Adrian, and I have been trying out this Apple Watch for the past week. This is the 44 millimeter space gray in aluminium, the cheapest version of the Apple Watch. Well, it's the cheapest 44 millimeter version of the Apple Watch and it is the Wi-Fi only, so it doesn't have the cellular chip in it. I'll talk about why I didn't go with the cellular version later on. This is my first Apple Watch. I actually had the original Apple Watch back in the day. What was that, five years ago, I think it is now. I sold it because I just didn't use it enough. It, it kind of just ended up sitting around. I kind of feel like these devices, you need to make it part of your life. I decided to give it another go because it's kind of become socially acceptable to wear two watches, to wear an Apple Watch and a mechanical watch. I did try to double wrist, but it wasn't something that just felt right. It might be something that feels right after a long period of time, um, but actually it just felt a bit weird wearing two watches, so I, I kept it just to one watch. Before we go any further, if you want to support the channel, just hit that subscribe button down the bottom there. And if you're into your normal watches, then jump over to barkandjack.shop and check out our straps. We have NATO straps and leather straps over there. So as I say, this is the 44 millimeter space gray in aluminium because this has mineral crystal top. The downside to this having mineral crystal is the fact that it will scratch eventually. But these products aren't designed to be worn forever. It's not like a high-end watch where this essentially should last you your lifetime. These are unfortunately disposable items. If I were to keep this watch, then I'd be updating it next year, if not the year after. Apple stopped supporting items when they're over seven years old and they class those as being vintage. So the best that this will get is a seven year lifespan. The fact it has such a short, relatively short lifespan means that the lack of sapphire crystal isn't that much of a hit. And so the mineral crystal should be able to, um, should be able to last that long. I went for the black because I have a thing about black watches at the moment. And ultimately this would be something that I don't really want to be eye catching. I kind of want it just to be an item there to support me as opposed to be uh, like one of my other watches, which would be a piece of jewelry. Uh, this would kind of just be like an iPhone. It's, it's just there to support what I do emails, text messages, and so on. It's not there to be a good looking device, so to speak. What I find appealing about the Apple Watch is how it is an extension to your phone. The phones are absolutely massive now. And the idea that this can just be sat in the office or sat in the bedroom and I can walk around the house and still pretty much have access to the majority of things that are on my phone just on my wrist is really quite handy. I also like to have my phone on silent. I rarely pick up phone calls. So the fact that I can kind of monitor what's happening on my phone on my wrist is it's just convenient. And I, I guess that's what we're paying for is that convenience. The apps that I found most useful on here are the simple things, just like having mail. Having mail pop up and know whether I need to action something or not action something. Uh, simple things like having alarms on my wrist. I, none of my watches have any sort of alarm function. And, and so actually just having something simple like an alarm function on your wrist is actually really handy. For me, it's more of the organizational kind of businessy bits that I like. So having calendar notifications on my wrist is really useful. Again, again I have my phone on silent and so notifications come up, but they don't alert me to those notifications. Whereas on my wrist, this thing can just do its little haptic kind of vibration. And it's just a very subtle thing. And it can just draw you in to say, hey, you're supposed to be doing something. I started to watch a poo pooed for a while. I just didn't, not that I didn't get, it just didn't really interest me, was the whole wellness part of the watch. So after a while, the watch will tell you to stand or it'll tell you to breathe. And by breathe, it actually means meditate. <laughs> it, it sounds silly because we're, humans and we have brains and we can decide when we want to stand and not stand. And it'd be easy for someone to say, I don't need a watch to tell me to stand. But actually I'd, I've realized I do need a watch to tell me to stand. I can sit in this office in my studio and just work all day and pretty much just get up to feed myself and empty myself. And that's pretty much it. But actually that, that is really bad for you. And if you work in an office like me and you're not active like me, it's pretty much guaranteed that you have a bad back. By this simply giving you a little nudge to say, get up for a second, will prevent you from having a bad back. One big thing though is uh, I like to get up early. My wife doesn't. And so I can't really have an alarm clock because it'll just wake everyone up. And so it would be really nice to have something to strap to my wrist that can just quietly wake me up with this little vibrations. This woke me up at four in the morning telling me that I need to stand up. 
because I'd been sat down for four hours. The thing that annoyed me the most was the fact that I didn't take the watch off. I kept the watch on, so a couple of hours later, it then woke me up to breathe. And just make sure you change those functions, otherwise it, it might, might piss you off a bit. One thing that's awesome if you're gonna wear this at nighttime is that it actually has a little torch function. So if you just swipe up from the bottom, you have this little torch button here. And what's super cool is that when you're holding your wrist towards you, it's, it's dimmed a light because it, it's not gonna blind you in the middle of the night. And then you rotate your wrist to point, to shine the torch where you want it. And then it suddenly increases in brightness and it will just continue to increase and decrease. Is that coming across? Yeah, it is a bit. It's just little things like that, which I think are quite cool. And th th there's a few kind of hidden things where people have actually really thought about not just the function, but the, the interaction, the user interaction. They've really focused on, we're gonna give this function, but what can we do to make it really great? And that's, that's pretty cool. Now, the challenge with using this at nighttime whilst you're sleeping is that the battery life is still crap. The battery has improved massively since the previous versions, and that's why it can have the always on um, screen. But the challenge is, is that when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna need to charge your watch. So at some point, you're gonna have to be without the watch. I went out for dinner the other night, I wore the watch, and I had this little notification come up and say, you need to put the watch into power saving mode. And for some reason, it really annoyed me. And it just, I felt somewhat let down. This watch has a three year battery life. And this watch, if it runs out of power, I just wind it and we're, we're good to go again. So th there was something annoying about that function. And the fact when you put it into power save mode, it just turns to a massive digital clock and that's it. So I still think from a user experience point of view, they really need to fix that battery life or improve the speed in which it charges. If they can get this to charge in half an hour or an hour, then great. But um, at the moment, it charges quite slowly. I really like the faces that they have for the watches. I absolutely love this California dial. I think I don't, it, it, there's just this really awesome kind of contrast between the very obviously, oops, obviously uh, high technology design of watch with the fairly retro, fairly traditional design of the Californian dial. You have a really nice sweeping seconds hand, which is really quite pleasant. And you can obviously customize absolutely everything that is on this dial. What I will say, however, is I'm a bit disappointed in the, the display. I think the display could be, it could just be sharper. This isn't, it's a tiny display. So it's not like a phone where you have it pretty much at arm's length. It's a tiny display, so, and I, I have um, perfect vision. I've got 2020 vision, so it's not like I'm, I'm struggling to see the display. It's just small, and so you're holding it closer, and therefore you do notice the pixels. The pixels are tiny because it's got the retina display, but you do notice the pixels. There's a few little nuggets in here where it feels like someone at the top in the design process is a watch person, is a mechanical watch person. Because there, there are things in here which really do feel quite mechanical. And there's some, setting the alarm, when you set an alarm on one of these things, there's a real nice mechanical feeling about it. The typography and design of the dial is, it is quite obviously inspired from a pilot's watch. But when you move the crown to set the hours or the minutes, it's just such a really pleasant, experience. You're not going to be able to see this, you're not going to be able to feel it. It's the, the haptic motor inside is, is vibrating, is, is moving to give you this kind of, this response from when you're moving the crown and it's, it's so well done. Someone has really sat down and thought about this. And the haptic motor, it, it does make it feel like you're moving gears. <laughs> So I bought this watch as a test drive to see whether it would be something that, um, now that I kind of work within the social media realm, I get a lot of notifications naturally as, as part of this. Um, and I thought it'd be useful to have that direct connection to YouTube, direct connection to Instagram, WhatsApp and, and everything else. But it's, I, I don't want that, I've realized. I struggle with keeping up with the social media side of all of this. So actually just being reminded that I haven't 
read X message or replied to email X. It, I, I don't need to be told that. I already know that this phone is full up of, of things that I haven't done. So actually the, the watch isn't allowing me to do those things. It's just reminding me that I haven't done those things, if, if that makes any sense. The life kind of organizational side of it is very useful, but when it comes to wearing it as a watch, I wouldn't choose this over any of my other watches. I would much prefer to choose something like this. It's, it, it's, this is just more me. And it actually, maybe the fact that this can't tell me that I have an email that I need to reply, or this can't tell me that I have to go do X, Y, Z. Maybe I like that simplicity. Style-wise, you can make this a very good looking watch. There are so many faces in there and there's so much customization that you can do that you can just make it a good looking watch. But that's all I need. I, I don't need all of this. So let's come back to my point about it being a value proposition. I think the Apple Watch, I think all the Apple Watches actually have been really good value. 420 odd pounds for Everything that this gives you is really very, very impressive, especially all the app development that goes into this thing. Not only do the functionalities allow it to be a brilliant value proposition, the build quality is incredible, and this could easily challenge watches that are within the same price range. This is an old mechanism, but the mechanism to change the straps is absolutely brilliant. It's easy, and these straps are beautifully made, far better than any rubber or silicon strap that I've seen made by traditional watch companies. And actually props to the girl in the shop who, in the Apple store who sold me this to me. When I asked her whether I should go cellular or non-cellular, she just asked me, are you ever without your phone? Well, no, of course I'm never without my phone. Well, you don't need the cellular version then. I think she saved me like a hundred quid or something. So um, yeah, props to her. So I think as an overall package, if, the, if I was to be a one watch person, and not be into mechanical watches, obviously, then I think this would actually be a really good value proposition. If you can get over the mindset that you're gonna to have to change it in a couple of years, or you'll probably just want to change it in a couple of years. Basically, there's gonna be two people who, who should buy this watch. It's gonna be the person who can kind of dedicate their arm space to wearing this sort of thing so that you get the most out of the watch. You need to know your way around the watch to get the most from it. And also it needs to learn you, you need to learn it to kind of really make it part of your tech ecosystem. The other side of it is just tech heads who just wants to have the latest gadget. It is a superb gadget. It is very, very impressive what they've crammed into this little thing. For anyone in between, I'd say it's, it's not really worth it. For me, I love my tech, I'm, I am surrounded by tech. I used to work for Apple and my whole house is Apple. But actually, I, I don't think this is for me. Guys, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Apple Watch. I'm really not interested in people trying to have a debate around whether it's a watch or not. Patek Philippe described what they create as wrist format timekeeping instruments. This is a wrist format timekeeping instrument. A watch, end of. Guys, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button down there or jump over to barkandjack.shop and check out our straps that we have over there. We have leather straps and NATO straps. If you want to check out previous videos and articles, jump over to barkandjack.com. If you're on Instagram, go check me out at barkandjack and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.